Hey, 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 it's Triple A Wednesday, which is my weekly Q&A session where I'm popping into the comments and answering questions you've left me about the publishing industry and how to write a better book. I always have such a blast learning more about what you all are working on, and I want to do everything I can to help you through the challenges, so please keep the questions coming. A couple of pieces of housekeeping, I'll keep it quick. It'll take one second, but if you pop under the video and hit that thumbs up button, it really helps out my channel in a big way and helps me know that you're enjoying these Q&As. And second, if you're new to my channel or you've seen my videos but haven't yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please hit that subscribe button to join our amazing community of more than 37,000 authors. This way, you won't miss out on any of my future Q&As or my deeper dive videos that I publish on Sundays where I talk about an aspect of writing or the publishing industry. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into the questions today. Here's the first question. Hi, Alyssa. I was wondering what's the difference between high and low fantasy books? I keep hearing about it. I greatly appreciate it if you make a video explaining the differences. High fantasy refers to a fantasy novel where the setting is not our own world. It is some other type of world and universe entirely. High fantasy is also often used interchangeably with epic fantasy, where the story has, you guessed it, an epic scope or scale. By contrast, low fantasy takes place in our real world. However, the magical or fantastical elements come into it, but otherwise the setting looks as our actual world does. Here's the next question. Here's something I don't understand. Why do publishers put the responsibility of finding understanding comps on writers? They would have much better insight into the current trends and are much more qualified to make those comparisons. I'm the writer, not the publisher. It feels like doing their work for them. Can anyone explain how this responsibility came to fall on the writer? I totally hear you on the frustrations of having to find comp titles. It's one of the most challenging parts of putting together your query letter and something I talk about a lot with my clients and something I talk about a lot in these Q&A videos because I know a lot of you struggle with comps and rightfully so, they're just tough. So why do agents ask for comps as part of the query letter? The idea behind comps is to give an agent a sense of the style, tone, and flavor, so to speak, of your book. Because if you say it's just historical fiction, that could look like a lot of different types of stories underneath the historical fiction genre. For instance, the Bridgerton series and A Gentleman in Moscow are both considered historical fiction, but they have very different styles and tones and appeal to different audiences. So comps help fill in that gap between the genre and the audience for your book and help the agent get a better understanding of what your book is all about and who it would appeal to. Now, it's not just authors who have to find comps as part of the query letter. Your agents and publishing team are also going to talk about comps throughout the publishing process. And sometimes they also struggle with them, frankly. When an agent is pitching your book to publishers, they will typically use some kind of comp there. And if a publishing house is interested in making you a book deal offer, they will include comps in their PNL, which is essentially their spreadsheet that helps them determine how many copies your book might sell and therefore what they wanna offer you as your payment terms. For the purposes of your query letter though, know that comps are really meant to give the agent a sense of the vibe of your book. And know that you're not going to find a perfect comp and agents don't expect you to. If an agent requires you to submit comps as part of your query letter, give it your best shot. Trust me that agents know how challenging it can be because they do have to find comps themselves as well. If you're enjoying my YouTube content, I have great news. There are so many more resources just waiting for you at my newsletter website, chapter-break.com. I'm building it out as a hub for exclusive interviews with publishing industry insiders and successfully published best-selling authors. So I don't want you to miss out on all of their amazing insights. I'm also doing deeper dive content into specific editorial issues from my background as a professional book editor. It's completely free to sign up. And as a bonus, you will receive my story self-assessment worksheet. This is a resource I designed for anyone who feels stuck in their current draft and doesn't know where to take it from here. It's going to help you see the strengths and weaknesses in your work in progress 
and make it even stronger on the next draft. The links to download the free story self-assessment worksheet and check out my newsletter are in the description. We have time for one more question today. Question regarding my nano work in progress. It is a YA court romanticy with a dark twist. Previously to nano, which I won, I created a magic system, fantastical creatures, and even weaved this through the political themes of my story. This came naturally to me, as magic is the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of the fantasy genre. However, now that I am exiting the first half of my story, I am considering emitting most magic from the book completely, except for the fantastical creatures, mind reading, etc. Now I am aware of the magicless cozy fantasy subgenre that is rising in popularity. However, my book has a grueling competition that I'm unsure meets that criteria. My question is, is my novel still a fantasy? Well, most fantasy novels do include magic elements to some degree. They don't all necessarily include magic. Magic is certainly the most common fantasy element, but it's not the only fantastical element you could have in your story. You could have fantastical creatures, for instance, that are not necessarily magical. So even though your story doesn't include magic anymore after your revision, if it still includes some kind of fantasy element that is pervading the story, then I would definitely still consider it fantasy. You mentioned that your story has a grueling competition and you're not sure if that's at odds with the genre. You might not classify the novel as cozy fantasy specifically because of that darker element to the plot, but it could still certainly be classified as fantasy in general. That's all we had time for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Triple A Wednesday session. If you have a question you'd like to ask, drop it in the comments and it will be added to my queue for my next video. Before you head out, don't forget your free story self-assessment worksheet waiting for you in the description, as well as my newsletter link. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on my next video and go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying these sessions. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.